Okay, so thanks, Jens, for the introduction. Uh, I'm really happy to be presenting here. Um, so today I'm going to present a project called Intersectional Inequalities in Science, which uh, is a research project that's soon coming out. So I'm very excited to show it here. And uh, we developed it uh, together with Vincent Larivière, Cassidy Sushimoto, uh, and Emma Monroe White. So I would like to start with the quote from Suberi uh, that says that the racialization of data is an artifact of both the struggles to preserve and to destroy, destroy racial stratification. And in this case, we want to do a quantitative analysis of uh, authors and science in US, where we are going to include um, a quantification of uh, or racialized data of uh, race and gender uh, in US because what we want to understand is how the cultural construct of race influence a uh, US academy. And as bibliometric databases don't have information on authors self-perceived race, we first need to build a name-based racial inference algorithm, uh, which is going to be based on family names and census data. Today, I'm not going to go too much into details into this uh, inference algorithm, but of course we can discuss about it uh, if you want. And also we want to understand the intersection between race and gender. So we also uh, do gender inference based on the given names and given the limitations on data and on our system, uh, this is going to be considered in a binary way. We uh, are using Web of Science, US affiliated for softwares from 2008 to 2019. And this is because before 2008, we don't have the names that we need to of others, the given names of authors, so we can do the gender inference. And we are focusing in US because the concept of race and the categories of race are a cultural construct and therefore are a country dependent. So it's not, it's not something that we can do on a global level without incurring into biases and, and problematic conceptualizations. So this database uh, has 5.4 million articles and 1.6 million different distinct authors. So our idea is to understand the distribution of research topics uh, by race and gender. And to understand how these research topics, uh, how research topics that are focused on marginalized populations that are uh, towards improving the living conditions of marginalized populations are being studied, studied in science. But we also want to understand how the citation gap uh, occurs and distributes along race, gender, and research topics. So to start with the first results, here I'm showing three panels. The first one has the distribution of race and gender on the census population in 2010 in US. The second panel has the inferred or aggregate uh, rate of each race and gender in world science. And the third one also considers the NSF data on graduates, in, of PhD graduates, to have a proxy of what would be the Web of Science US residence first authors. So what we can see in the difference between panels A and B is that the um, Asian and white men authors are overrepresented in the distribution of Web of Science authors. But also if we compare panels B and C, we see that the large population of the Asian authors are actually not US residents. And therefore, maybe it's not fair to do a benchmark on the census data to define overrepresentation on this population. We can also see that uh, women are underrepresented, that uh, Black and Latinx authors are underrepresented, and that the intersection of Black and Latinx women is the most underrepresented uh, set of groups. If we look at the distributions, by uh, disciplines. Here we are showing by color the over and under representation of authors 
uh, given their uh, own distribution in web of science. So this is not considered in the census, but their own ag uh, aggregate proportion in web of science and how they are relatively distributed across uh, disciplines. And we can see that there is a clear gender pattern, uh, especially for Latinx, Black and white women that tend to be more underrepresented and overrepresented in the same uh, disciplines. And um, this is not exactly the case for Asian authors. We can see also on top the distribution of citations by each of the groups. On blue, we are showing the raw number of citations. Uh, and we can see that there is a clear gender gap in the citations. But also we can see that there is a different distribution of citations across disciplines. So we use the field normalization on citations to see um, how this distribution change. And we can see that there is a, a change in the citation gender gap, which reduce, but nevertheless, it doesn't disappear. If we um, look some specific examples of some uh, fields like engineering and nursing here, we are uh, again showing the distribution of authors by race and gender. And the line that you can see uh, above or uh, within each column, it represents the pro their proportion on the census. So we can see that in engineering, uh, Asian authors and white men are overrepresented, while um, on nursing, for example, white men are actually underrepresented and uh, white women tend to be overrepresented uh, in this uh, particular discipline. And if we would do this across all disciplines, across all uh, specializations, we would see that for almost all cases, Black and Latinx authors will be underrepresented in, in almost all cases. This actually nursing is one of the few examples where Black women are not underrepresented. So we want to go deeper into this analysis that uh, what I showed until now is more or less uh, a known thing by, by our field. And we want to see the relation between this and the research topics defined as a micro level uh, field and the relation with race and gender. So we are going to focus on two disciplines, uh, health and social science. Actually for social science, we are also including humanities and professional fields. And we are going to use a model from topic modeling, which is called LDA to define uh, research topics based on the distribution of words in abstracts and titles and keywords. So we are going to have for each article a distribution over topics. Each topic will have uh, some words that are going to be uh, representative of this topic. And then we are going to compute the aggregate distribution to understand the distribution of race and gender within each of these topics. So in this figure, we are showing the proportion of women in the vertical axis. And you can see this uh, horizontal gray line as the average distribution of women overall. Each point represents a topic within health. And the horizontal axis represents the proportion of each of the racial groups uh, for all the four quadrants. The color represents the average number of citations and then the points have a different size depending on the proportion of the topic over the total data set. So the first thing that we can see is that across all figures, uh, those topics that are on the top are the ones where uh, women tend to publish more. And these are related on with the nursing and pregnancy and education. And these words that appear here is um, our interpretation of the topic. So we saw which were the most relevant words for each topic, and we decided to add a, a label for a few of them. If we see the top uh, right corner, we can see that uh, Black authors uh, have more publications on topics related with African-American studies or racial disparities. And uh, on the bottom left, we can see that the Latinx authors tend to have more publications on Mexican or Latinx bodies, but also with relation of the yeah, language issues like English and Spanish, discrimination and racial disparities. 
Asian authors have a, there is one topic where they publish a much more than on any other, which is a, we, we label it China because it has words related with China. And um, we, if we see the white authors, they don't have, don't tend to have a, any topics where they are particularly overrepresented. So there is no topic that is specific for this group. Now uh, we're seeing the same type of figure, but for social science, humanities, and professional fields. And what we can see is that there are actually uh, a lot of coincidence uh, given uh, for these two very different disciplines, because um, we can see that for a woman, the, those topics where they are most represented are related with families and learning, but also on gender-based violence and literacy. We see uh, for black authors on the top right that um, they focus on racial discrimination, on African American culture or, or Africa. Uh, Latinx authors tend to focus more on immigrant issues, on political identity or migration or language again. And uh, finally, Asian authors tend to focus more on economics and all topics related with economics. And um, white authors, again, uh, don't have a particularly uh, any, any topic where they have a particular interest or publish more. There is also a statistical property here that Asian and white are the two largest groups and represent the great majority of the uh, population. And therefore, where uh, Asian authors are particularly more productive or they publish more, it's expected that white authors are going to publish less. So before we were uh, seeing that if we normalize on the field uh, uh, level for citations, the citation gap reduces. So uh, we have the question now of what happens with the citations on this more uh, micro level. So what we can see here is that on the vertical axis, we sorted all topics by the proportion of uh, white men. And this is because white men is the most highly cited group in health. And then on the margin, we can see the average number of citations of each topic. And we can see that there is a positive correlation between the overrepresentation of white men in health with uh, topics that are more highly cited. So this means that uh, white men tend to do research on more highly cited topics. We can also see that there is a correlation on the distribution of topics uh, over and under representation of topics. And um, we can see that where white men are more represented, there's also more black, Latinx, and Asian men, while uh, Latinx, black, and uh, white women tend to be underrepresented. So there is a gender pattern here. If we do the same for social science, here we choose to sort it by Asian men because it's the most highly cited group. And again, we can see that there is a positive correlation between the number of citations and the overrepresentation of this group. So this means that Asian men tend to do research on more highly cited topics. And again, we can see a distribution across a topics, like a, a gender pattern across research topics. But does this imply that if we do uh, extreme micro level normalization, we will um, cancel the citation gap? Uh, actually, no. If we um, here in this other type of analysis, what we are doing is uh, sort topics by, by the average number of citations. So the horizontal axis doesn't have a meaning because topics don't have a natural order. They can be, uh, they, they are variant to, to order. But uh, here we are uh, sorting them by the average number of citations on the horizontal axis. And then on the vertical axis, we are showing the average number of citations for each of these groups. This means for each of the intersections of race and gender for each topic. So the color of each uh, dot here represents a topic, a race and a gender. And then we do a smoothing over the distribution of each group to understand the um, underlying distribution of uh, citations across topics. And what we can see here is, uh, so all the light colors represent men and all the uh, more deeper colors represent women. Uh, and we can see that they are perfectly sorted in two groups where 
all the uh, distributions that represent men are uh, on top and the distributions that represent women are below. And this implies that the citations across, um, so that uh, men tend to have more citations on both highly cited and low cited topics, while women tend to have less citations across all topics. So even if we normalize on this micro level for health, we still see this uh, citation gap. In the case of social science, this is a little more complex. Uh, it's basically the same visualization, but what you can see here is that uh, Asian men tend to have more citations across the range of topics. Then all the groups tend to be uh, together in the low cited topics, but then they split into different branches. First, uh, white and black men following uh, Asian men. Then uh, Latinx men and Asian women. And then white, black, and Latinx women tend to have the less number of citations across all topics. And therefore, there is uh, both an intertopic and intratopic bias. This means there is a bias on the distribution of citations on top uh, of topics, and uh, marginalized groups tend to do research on topics that are less cited and are less. Uh, taken by science as a whole, uh, but also within those the, the, each topic, we can see that there is a bias in the number of citations. So um, what I will show now, it's a contrafactual analysis. So this means it's not a prediction or a model that actually uh, we, we consider it's actually something that's going to happen, but this Ceteris Paribus, if everything remains the same, what would happen if the proportion of authors by race and gender would be matching that of the 2010 census. So if the, there is no underrepresentation of any group corresponding a, or related with the US census, what would happen in the number of publications? And for this, uh, we do an assumption of constant productivity. We consider, this means we consider career age, and then we multiply uh, each author for each career age. So uh, all, uh, authors that have been a longer time in, in academia are expected to publish uh, equivalently, equivalently more. And this is just a simplifying assumption. And um, what we can see here for disciplines is that uh, if uh, we do this contrafactor analysis, we would have 53% uh, more articles on nursing or 37% more articles on social work, or 30% more on public health. While those disciplines that would have the highest decreases in number of publications would be engineering, physics, and math. And I think the most interesting is, is what happened on the discipline level and on, our, on the topics that we constructed. So this is basically the same analysis, but only considering uh, equal representation with respect of the census for health. And the uh, below we have the, the top five words for each topic, and this is how we can understand which topic is talking about. And we can see that the topics with the highest increases in number of publications will be in this contrafactor analysis related with uh, racial disparities, discrimination, Latinx population. While the topics that uh, would have the highest decreases are normally related with the health costs and the economics of health, but also on tobacco and on China. And if we do this same analysis uh, for social science, we can see that uh, the topics that would have the highest increases are uh, related with learning, with children and gender-based violence while the topics that would have the highest decreases are all of them related with economics. So uh, to conclude, we uh, have seen that there is an underrepresentation of marginalized groups at the intersection of race and gender, that the groups have a specific research interests, and therefore there are relevant understudied topics in science under uh, published topics in science that are those that mainly affect those marginalized groups. And we have also seen this in the counterfactual analysis. So 
uh, to finalize, we have finally see that uh, marginalized, marginalized groups also tend to be less cited, and this is both to a field and topic distribution, but also for a within topic bias. So thank you very much, and I hope to hear your questions.